John of the Pittsburgh Steelers, John Kolb. The big Army lieutenant from Sweden, Lars Hedlund. Billy Kazmaier, the national powerlifting champion. Joe Doobie, the former world Olympic lifting champion. Cleve Dean, the arm and wrist wrestling champion of the world. Big Bill Anderson from the Highland Games in Scotland. Don Reinhout, the world record holder in powerlifting. Jerry Blackwell, a professional wrestler. And from the St. Louis Cardinals, Bob Young. Terry, how do you come up with a bunch of beef and potatoes like this from around the world? These guys represent various sports in which strength is important. They were selected by a group of experts in the field of strength. Each competitor is guaranteed $2,000 against bonus money. But when you see what the bonus money is, you'll know why they're so serious and why they try so hard. Yeah, that'll buy a lot of that beef and potatoes. $10,000 for first place. Total bonus prize money of $25,000. And check out this point system, which will be used for nine of the ten events. Ten points for first place, $50 per point. And we're going to be here for the next five weeks. Now, last year's champion, Don Reinhout, in his winning lift, was 270 pounds. And the group we've got going today look like they're going to go beyond that. Beyond that means 290 pounds and three are left. Don Reinhout, who you just saw win this event last year. And Billy Kazmaier, who's chalking up. He's now moved to California. This big bull is going to give it a shot before Lars Hedlund, the Swede, comes on. Here's Kaz. Kaz is so strong, it's just unbelievable. He has no technique, he has trouble getting his arms down, but he's so strong that he may just be able to press the weight overhead and hold it. Yes, sir, look at that. Just unbelievable, muscle. unbelievable. It'd be hard to refuse that person anything. <laughs> Would you buy a used car from Billy Kazma? The big guy from upstate New York. Good concentration. Yeah, he's bearing down, using all the years of experience that he had as many times world powerlifting champion. He practiced this lift all year long. He has a big barrel at his home that he practices with. He has a real patterned, good way to do it. See, he steps forward with one foot. He takes his time, too, doesn't he? Yep, takes his time. Look at that. My goodness. 290. I believe he can do over 300 if he has to. Remember last year's record was 270 by this same man. Here's Lars Hedler. Lars and Bill are not going to let... This be one cheaply. He was an Olympic lifter at one time and lifted 500 pounds over his head, so you get an idea of how tough this event really, really is. And he's vocal. Oh, no. Not quite? Nope, not. He didn't hold it overhead and control it quite long enough to satisfy the judges. So they have to try it again. He's got 90 seconds to do it in, so he still has quite a bit of time left. They stare at that uh, barrel like there might be a rattlesnake in a gunny sack, don't they? They look at it like it's an animated object. Good position? Yes, sir. He did it. Yes, sir. Load on 300. Let's see it. Kazmaier, Reinhout, and Lars Hedlund at 300 pounds. Look at this. Breathing fire again. And all three finalists are over 300 pounds themselves, Terry, huh? Yep. You've got to take a big man to lift these truly big weights because you've got to balance, use your own body to balance against the great weight that's inside the barrel in lead shot and water. Kaz is struggling a little bit with his 300 pounds. I can understand it. Yeah, he almost pressed it again. That's just unbelievable. But I think he's holding it too long now. His arms and shoulders are starting to they'll start to deaden now. 300 pounds. Well, he's got about about 50 seconds left. But he spent a lot of energy. I don't know if he'll have enough left to give it another shot. We'll have to see. Tell you, if all the events like this, the nine coming up or anything like this, I'm really impressed. 45 seconds. Get on the records. Yes. No, he's going to let it go. Ryan out now is going to strap on that big belt. Now, what looks like it should have a 45 on the end of it. What are those belts for? <laughs> but Tom, the competitors, you've noticed other ones with those belts on. They wear them so that they get a little extra support in the back and in the waist when they handle these terrific weights. That one's pretty thick and a long way around. He's a big man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Reinhardt's never really lifted 300 pounds, but he must be picked up seeing Kaz fail, huh? Yeah, this gives him a chance to go into the lead now. He's never done this much even in practice, but I think he's trained for it. Push it, push it! Oh, he's losing his balance. No, sir, he didn't hold it up. He got it overhead, but he didn't balance it, but so close. 
No cigar, right? No, no cigar. He's got a little time, though. Boy, he's a patient man, though. He can really concentrate. Got to have it this time. Got it in good shape now. Look at him. Yep, he controlled it. The judges said he held it long enough, so it's a good lift. Now Lars Headline, the Swedish lieutenant. I'd go up any beach, he'd send me up. He scares you. Yeah, he's definitely all Sweden, I'm sure. <laughs> he holds the world record now in the bench press at about 614. So he has enormous strength in his chest and shoulders. Got it up, but no, nope, no, he didn't quite control it. He didn't quite hold it long enough. Gee, it's so close. He'll let out a bellow this time. He'll sound like he's wounded. <laughs> he'll be wounded. If he doesn't lift it, he'll be tied for second with Kazmaier, and Brown Hall will win it. A lot of breathing going on, getting ready. Oh, that's it. The winner of event number one, Don Reinhout. Receives congratulations. Don Reinhout, the winner with Hedlund and Kazmaier close behind. What do you like? Well, thank heavens, Cleve Dean's a good old boy. How big is your forearm? Well, like it is right now, about 18, but it'll probably go up 19 or better. If you're doing something with it, huh? You're only 25 now, aren't you? 25, right. And you know, this is the first time, Cleve, that you've been in this competition. You, you really didn't know what to expect. Uh, uh, are you surprised that these guys are that good, or, or that they're into this thing more than you are at this stage? You think? Well, I'm surprised, and I'm not surprised because some of these guys here, if you look at them, you can tell they look like they can handle anything in the world. But you're going to go back to the farm. Now you got a big pig farm down there. And I, now your lady told me that one time a 600-pound sow was fooling around trying to get out, and that you reached over and grabbed her by the ears and pulled it up, spanked her and stopped her and sent her back. <laughs> Did you do that, really? Is that a true story? Uh, I've caught hogs that weigh 600 pounds in a dead run. And just stopped them? Yeah. That's pretty well, strong. Didn't exactly stop them dead still. We tumbled a little while, but we stopped. Yeah, come on, Bill. And these five competitors are going to tumble a lot over these bars of steel 11, 16 inches thick. And four of the five larger competitors in this event, hey John, too. look at the bend there. Cole, Cole really got it started then. Now, he's got it farther than anyone now. Although, Cleve also has a good bend, but John's his father. Kazmaier's yeah, got a good bend. Lars, but, number two there, the right part of your screen, hasn't uh, done much at all no, yet. he's waiting. All yeah, over 300 pounds, but John Cole right in the center of your screen. Yeah, he's far smaller, far smaller than the other four men. Well, they're groaning and gnashing their teeth. It's wild. Absolute effort. They're trying to get it past the point where they can use the great muscles of their shoulders on it. Well, the people are really getting into this. They're really rooting. He lost his towel, just bending it over his bare head now. The leader right in the middle. It looks like John Cole. Yeah. John's still in the lead. Learned how to hold, blocking those linemen on Sunday <laughs> afternoons. The winner looks to be John Cole and Cleve Dean pretty close. I guess it only figures that somebody from Pittsburgh would be the guy that could build the steel bars. But uh, congratulations, Thank John. You. Quite, quite enough. Thank you very much. I'm just like Don Reinhold. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> it's about the fellow that you beat out by uh, probably about an inch uh, unofficially right now. But uh, uh, you're giving 200 pounds away to, uh, to big, uh, big Dean over there who is 465 pounds. But this is his first competition. Pretty good job by him, huh? Sure was. Thank you. Thank you very much. The sucker here, as little as he hit off, just bob him on the head and get rid of him now. <laughs> The statistics tell the story. The measurement with Cole, of course, winning. Also getting 10 points for first place. And after the first week of competition, Reinhardt with a narrow lead over John Cole. Then it's Kazmaier, Hedlund, and Dean rounding out the top five. No Scottish Highland Games. How about it, Doctor? Uh, this really is a, a log, but in Scotland they call it a caber. How long? It's 14 feet long. How much? Weighs about 87 pounds. And the point is to pick it up in your hands, run with it, and make it turn over in the air. And these guys, I think, will throw it close to 40 feet. The five finals and their qualifying distances. Bill Anderson, 33 feet, 5 inches. John Kolb, 35, 1 and a half inches. Big Bob Young, 36, 5 and a half inches. Look out, Billy Kazmaier, 36, 9 and a half. And Lars Hedlund with the best toss in preliminaries, 37, 5 and a half inches. 
Now to the finals for the best of two. Now, does Anderson really have an advantage in this last round, Terry? Uh, well, in a way, he may have a disadvantage because he practices to throw the thing straight rather than for distance. And that may work against him because he learned one technique and he has to kind of relearn another one here. Pretty casual. Still got his watch yeah. on. Now, you measure from the feet, right, to the end of the board? That's right. From the end of the toe, the father's toe, to where the farthest end of the pole lands on the ground. Not the bounce. That's right. Not the bounce. Very important. Let's see the finals now of the Kieber toss. 34-7. He improved on his preliminaries. Best toss. Bob Young, he's beefed up uh, from football. I don't think he weighs that much when he plays offensive well, guard. close to that. He usually plays about 275. Right. He's now about 285. 285. Yeah. That's pretty casual, too. He's still got the shades on. <laughs> yeah. Bob is uh, <laughs> going to handle this well, I think. He's uh, very, very explosive. Wow. You know, he, if he stepped forward, that's going to cost him a foot or so. You're absolutely right. Let's see what the measurement is. It did cost Bob Young. 34-9. That's not nearly as good as his best in the preliminary. Lars Hedlund. By now, he's psyched up. He walks around, talks to people in the gallery, gets under the umbrella, comes back out. Yeah, he did well last year in these events. He wants to do even better this year. Now, it's a good throw. I think that may put him in first place. Let's see. 35. Just over 35 feet. With Bill Kazmaier and John Kolb left. There's Kazmaier. Breathing fire. Yep, he needs to go over 35 feet to go into first place here. He's a dedicated guy, though. He works, what, four or five hours a day? Just yeah, yeah, he's, on his body? he's training really hard. He's pulled his weight up about 50 pounds this last year. He's backing down right now. He's got to get it going the right direction. That's a fine throw. Even though he stepped forward, it cost him a foot, but I think that was, I think that's well ahead of the best throw so far. 36, six and a half inches. That's the leader by far. So John Kolb now, the Pittsburgh Steelers, back down between the rock and the hard place. I guess good athletes like that, though. He's just got to flat lay out the best throw, doesn't he? Sure, he, he's the kind of guy that will respond to pressure. He likes it this way. Such a fine athlete, he's learned this event well. Good balance? Yeah, very little practice, but you can see he already really has control of this thing. Kolb's last toss. Oh, great height on it. Yes, good. sir. Does look good. It looks like a fine throw. Let's wait for the official length on that one. If there were no scratches, that could be the winner. 36, 8 and a quarter inches, and Kolb saved the best for last. And the numbers tell the story. John Cole picks up 10 points and $500. Kazmai second, Lars Hedlund third. And the new leader in the clubhouse after three events is John Cole. 125 pounds or 925 deadlift. 2550 or 950 deadlift. Terry, what's he thinking? Yeah, he he knows that this is right near his limit. He has the lubrication, some sort of lubrication on his thighs so that the bar will slide up. He's really trying to concentrate and focus all of his energy and strength on this one great effort. Remember, this big family man is 34 years of age and it's hot, boy. It's hot out here. to go. I think he's got it. Yep. Yes, sir. He pulled it. He's sure. What an Under. effort. Uh-oh. He's, he's watching. That is a maximum effort, isn't it? Yeah. He uses everything in the body. Yeah, huh? He's hyperventilated. He almost passed out. Comes Kazmaier. Again, that spiritual pneumonia, the inhaler there. It's done in international competition and all amateur sports allow the use of ammonia. Clear the head and focus the attention. He looks through that car like he'd like to burn it up. Now, Look watch at this. It. He's going to bear down, turn into an animal to lift this weight. Got to have it. Uh-oh. Stand back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he got it. Kazmaier easily muscled that. And now Don right out, I believe, is thinking he may not lift again. Just decided to let, let the young guy try well, to lift Well, I'm getting off wool for these things. I don't know. <laughs> he's 25. Yeah, he's a little bit younger, a little more, uh, a little more, you know, energy, I think, than I have. I, although I, I gave it the best shot I thought I did, but biggest lift you've ever had, now? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I think last year it came to around 8:10 that we did over here, and uh, so you know, quite a little bit of improvement. Add five pounds, Billy Casmine now can be the outright winner. If he doesn't, if he fails, he'll be a tie with Ryan out. He's going to attack it. It's good. Billy Kazmaier is the winner. 
They tell me one of the most remarkable things about you is that you went from like a 275 pounder to like 330 in what, a year? And you you didn't do it with just bulk, you did it with muscle, didn't you? Well, I'm trying to pack it on, yeah. Trying to make it in the super heavyweight class of powerlifting. I've got to have the weight. Did you learn a lot from the big fella, Don, the way he's... He's a hero. Huh? He's a legend, yeah. It's something to catch him, it's though. fun huh? to compete with him. Quite a guy that just won the car lift. Kazmaier getting 10 points. Ryan out second place, seven. Bob Young with four. And after two weeks and four events, Billy Kazmaier is now the leader. John Cobb trails very closely. And we have six events in three weeks left. These two guys should have good driving legs. No question about it. This is two of the strongest offensive linemen in the game. Maybe the two strongest. Bob is a little heavier. He's got a good lead on Cole. He's nope. going, what, 285? Yeah, 285. Cole about 260. Two good times there. Let's check it out. Replay, you can see that the strong finish by Cole didn't overtake Bob Young. We're going to grab Young right now. All right, you are 14.3, somewhere in that, uh, we haven't got the official time on it yet. You really did just get by him, but that was really a, a good race. You guys both performed pretty well, don't you think? <laughs> very well. Uh, John's a very good athlete, great competitor. Bob Young's time was 13.69, Kolb's 14.30. Remember, they are racing the clock while they're racing one another in these two-man heats. And look at this, Kaz Meyer gets Don Ryan out. These are the bulls. Yeah, these two big men should perhaps lower the best time so far. They're both tall, strong, heavy. Boy, those wraps around the elbow look, look at, like they're oh, coming down my leg. Go. Look at that. He, he did a 4740 in college. Uh, he's just running with the thing. Unbelievable. Oh, he almost... Almost went over the line, but still he's going to be way ahead. And Rideout's done this before. 12.25, you were the leader coming in, so now you... Looks like you might pick up the ten big ones on this, huh? Yeah. You know, you only won by like a quarter of a second. That Don was right off your your left tire. Yeah, I started turning there. Yeah? It's tough coming in. Have you practiced this before, or was this the first shot? That's pretty much my first time with something that heavy. <laughs> pretty much the first time. Pretty good time. 12.25, the leader... And, of course, the big fella, Ryan Outs, at 12.99. We'll get our final competitor in this. This is Joe Doobie from Florida. And Jerry Blackwell, by the way, the professional wrestler, is out of the competition due to that injury, Terry. So Doobie's going to go alone. It'll be a little tougher by This will definitely make it harder for Joe. He's a great, powerful athlete himself. He's not trained quite as hard lately as these other men, but still he's, he's doing very well. He's moving the thing. 100 feet up the hill at 750 pounds. It's a heck of a race. Is it legs more than anything? Legs, else? hips, lower back, arms, everything. Doobie at 16.48, not really in the chase. You can see the wheelbarrow results. Billy Kazmaier, Reinhardt Young, Hedlund, and John Cole. The standings, we're only halfway through week number three. Playboy Clever upstairs. A lot of work going to go on down under here. So we'll go to my expert analyst, my doctor of power. And uh, Terry, it's a fancy looking lift, but it's a tough lift, isn't it? Yeah, it's almost enough to make me want to come out of retirement, I'll tell you. <laughs> this one could do it, right? Yes, if anything could, that would do it. Okay, what about uh, Kazmaier, of course, leads? Uh, we've already seen him go for a word, world record last week, uh, lifting the automobile. Uh, uh, is he just going to stomp right through this thing? No, I don't think so. I think Reinhardt would have to be the favorite in this. He won it last year with 790 pounds, but I do think he's going to need more than that to win this year, but I think he can do more this year. Maximum effort. Do you think that you bunnies from the Los Angeles Playboy Club are going to be able to get a maximum effort down here from these guys? What about it, folks? All right. All right. Let's lift away on the girl lift, okay? Let's get with it. You're looking at the knees of Bob Young being wrapped. It's Don Ryan out and Bob Young still in. They're going to lift half a ton in the girl lift. Gonna, That's a lot. I guess it is. They're going to try it. This is well over the world record in the squat in powerlifting. This is a slightly different event, but still a thousand pounds. No matter how you cut it, it's just a remarkable, amazing amount of weight to try to lift with the now Young hips sort of and the legs. A, Young sort of attacks it, doesn't he? He walks in yeah. like he's bullying. Yeah, this is so much weight. Man. No, he started it, but it's just too much. I think he's uh, he realizes he's going to have to stand back and see if the big man from New York can do it. Let's sit with Bob Young and watch Don Reinhardt try for the thousand pounds. Bob, you sort of, you and your brother, I think, decided to use a little strategy and go for the 1,000 and uh, almost an impossible lift, but now at least you can split maybe first place points, huh? Well, Don possibly could miss it. He'd probably make it, but he could miss it. Now, here the big fellas go, and we'll sort of watch it together. You folks remember now that Reinhardt is really trying something monumental, 1,000 pounds. Listen to the chatter now. Boy, does he concentrate. thousand pounds beautiful girls above him he doesn't know any of that right now he's just thinking position 
An execution. A lot more cerebral than you think, isn't it, folks? He's ready now. All right, he got it. <laughs> you all right? I don't want you to black out, my friend. <laughs> I'm sitting over there with Bob Young, who said he thought you would make it. That's an incredible feat. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Huh? Thank you. How about that beautiful load you have oh, on your thousand pounds and all, though, huh? Can I keep them now that I lifted them? <laughs> is, it, is it the best lift you've ever had, do you think? Uh, yes, sir. That's the best I've ever huh? done. I'm really honored. It's, you know, well, it's just an honor to be here. And I'm, You're I'm never going to get old. You know what? You're getting younger every oh, day. Oh, gosh. Thank you. We keep trying anyway. How about this, the champion? Huh? That was a tough one, a thousand. Thank you. Don Reinhardt coming on strong in the girl lift. You can see he picked up 10 points. Young and Kazmaier close behind. And now Reinhardt's moved fast Colby to second place, and Kazmaier still leads. Seen Hoist, this looks like a tough event, Terry. Yeah, this is a hard event. It's an event where body weight is not as big as an advantage as it is in the other events. The hand strength again? Is this yeah. upper, upper body? Yeah, mostly upper body. Hand strength, forearm strength, back strength. And calluses on the hands. <laughs> it looks like it's going to be tough on that rope. Yeah. Dave Johns is a bodybuilder. He weighs about 235 pounds, and I think he ought to be given a medal for bravery to just be here against these giants. Because he's facing Cleve Dean, a big farmer from South Georgia who weighs 460. Cleve gets in that thing. It looks like his uh, school desk back in that little school room in Georgia. No problem. Ooh. Cleve gets it to the top, and so does Johns. Very good job for both men. Two competitors are now out due to injuries. That's, of course, Anderson, the big Scott, and Blackwell, a professional wrestler. Here's Joe Doobie on the left from Florida. He was world Olympic lifting champion in 1969. He's going against John Cole, the Pittsburgh Steeler offensive lineman. See, they have to, they're held down by the brace of the, on, the, on the top of their thighs, and they have to pull this weight, which is now 290 pounds, all the way up until it hits the top and... Hopefully locks in. Sometimes the apparatus doesn't work and the helpers grab it they so that the men don't get hurt. Oh, yeah. Within 30 seconds, too. There is That's a clock right. factor. Yeah. They're really not going against one another. They're going against the clock and they're going against the weight of the apparatus. We'll increase it as we get higher. That's Billy Kazmaier on the left at 300, what, 15 pounds? Yeah, 315 pounds. He's a strength coach at Auburn University. Lars Hedlund is a powerlifting champion of Europe and a lieutenant in the Swedish Army. Right, okay, also lieutenant. about 310. Both men should be able to pull this one. Yep. Uh oh, apparatus problem. The touch was made. Yeah, he got it. So did Bill. Nobody eliminated yet. This is the hoist. That's Bob Young, the 280 pound offensive lineman, and Don Reinhout to the right. Yeah, Don Reinhout, the powerlifting champion. And now, Bob has gloves on, but apparently he can't, you can see, he can't hold it. The gloves just don't have as good a gripping surface as your hands would. Well, now, he's had some hand trouble anyway oh, due yeah. to injury now. broken many times, his hands. He's always had a problem with his hands. And Let's that's really it. Well, he's going to be given another chance. That's Dave Kagey, and, of course, Jack Curran is the Lakers trainer, the trainer for our world's strongest men. See how much better he's doing it now. He's able to... He's having pain, though, but... No, didn't no, quite get not it up there. quite up. Not quite up. Now the weight goes up to 350. You've got to use the back on this, too. Oh, yeah, you can like... see the men laying back on it. You have to hold, you have to have the hands to hold it, and then you have to actually pull it. It's too much to pull just with your arms. You have to use your whole body, at least as much of your body as the apparatus allows you to use. Doobie on the left and John Kolb on the right. Kolb is a darn good competitor. Oh, Kolb's got some of the strongest hands in the world. He's just amazing. You can see Joe is having problems with Big John. Got it to the top. Yep. Touched up. Amazing athlete for small at 260 around here. Yeah, against these giants. Two men over 300 pounds, very well built. Neither one even have a 40-inch waist. <laughs> Wish I could say that. Okay, Kazmaier on the left. And big Lars Headland. You can see Bill is, Bill's hands are so thick, there's not much room for the rope once he closes them. He needs more. He wants more stick, I heard him say. Muscles in his fingers, too, huh? Yeah. See the hands? See how <laughs> thick they are? Size of that. He doesn't have as much gripping surface as the other men do. 
No, you can see it sliding through his The clock hands. is still moving. Uh oh, there it is. Couldn't do it. Kazmaier is out. It's going to be a problem for him in points. Right out never seems to be out. No. Right? Almost got it, but he couldn't quite. He missed it. Cleve passed on 350 pounds. Didn't even try it. He said, no, he wanted to wait. Give him 370. He had done something like 400 back down on the pig farm this way, but it's on a different apparatus. No, he's having trouble. It's not hand trouble for him. It's well, the wrist oh, wrestling champion yeah. of the world. That's true. Gee, look at that. Not quite. He's not going to be able to do it. It was a bad gamble on his part. That's the reason the varied events really do give you a severe yeah, test of no who question. is the strongest man they, overall. They test pretty well every muscle in the entire body. Here's Colbert. Here's a guy that really knows how to compete. He finds out the best way he can do it and seems to operate there. But John has a perfectly built hands for this event because his hands are very long, broad, and flat. They're not fleshy at all, and so he has a lot of grip surface to put onto that rope. The perfect hands. Here we perfect go. Perfect hands for an offensive lineman. <laughs> Look at him now. This guy in the line of scrimmage can tear your shirt off. Yeah, the man is <laughs> he's double tough. I think he's got a shot at this one. He's been a dark horse competitor already. Yes, now he's doing well in yes, this. Oh, this is a line. Just a couple more pulls. He, he got, got it. it. Yes, sir. Terrific. And this big Swede's going to try the 370-pounder, too, Terry. He's got a lot of pizzazz, though, doesn't he? He's always yeah, shouting and yeah. getting himself... He's a really rugged guy. The more I see him, the more I respect him. His hands are not as large as John's are, but he's a little stronger in his shoulders, I think, than, than John. And I just don't know whether he's going to be able to hold onto that rope long enough so that those strong shoulders can pull it all the way to the top. Sweetie's army must be something else. No wonder they never have a problem. <laughs> I don't think they need anybody but Lars. Send them all home. About an inch and a half rope? Yeah, just about. See, he's keeping his arms bent, whereas John kept them straight. He's using the upper body strength more than he's using the back. I believe he... Yes, sir. He's got a terrific, terrific effort. What an effort. Both of them look like they're spent. I think they may just go ahead and split first place and go to the next event. And so the hoist lift goes to two big blonde gentlemen. Kolb and Hedlund split the first place points. And the standings now, that means Hedlund has moved past Bob Young into fourth place, Kazmaier, Reinhardt, and John Kolb in third. The tram pull. And a definite style, I would imagine, is needed to get the darn thing started. Yeah, the men need to stay low. Now, Don has a big advantage because he's about 70 pounds heavier than Bob. Okay. And as you can see, that weight is a big advantage. Also, the size of the feet makes a difference. Cleve Dean should be great at this and a little <laughs> off. But see, Don wears a 15. Ooh, Look right at him. He's got a big lead. Left on your left now, there. Bob tried to get up too quick. Oh, yeah, look at that. Just walking with it, isn't he? Really powerful, over 10,000 pounds. And a bunch of screaming kids that are really pulling for Don Reinhardt. That's Bob Young. You stayed down until about halfway, and you finally got that train moving, and then you came up sort of and began to run with it. Right? Yes, sir. That's hard. <laughs> God, was this as good a run as you had last year? You oh, won this event, didn't you? Yes, it was uh, a little bit shorter, but it's pretty close to the same time, I think, and it was... 2,000 pounds more. You just never quit, do you, big fella? I have to stay in it. I came a long ways to compete. Reinhardt's time, 24.39. Young, 30.42. They're actually racing the clock and their own tramway, right? That's right. It's a head-to-head -head competition, but they're still actually competing against the clock. Now, Cleve got up a little too quick that Cleve time. Cleve Dean is far away from the camera. This yeah. is Dave Johns, the Mr. Universal. He's twice as heavy as the man he's going against. You can see the terrific trouble that a 230-pound strong man like Dave Johns is having with this thing. That gives you an idea of how much weight this really is. Well, you're right. Dave Johns is really struggling. Now, look at the feet on Cleve. You see those big 17s or 18s? He's headed, he's headed into the barn. Looks like he's going home for supper. Five platters of fried chicken. 
Look, he's around that Georgia pig farm of yours, baby. You came out of the blocks. 29, 29 seconds. Good run. Well, you had to we're going to win it now. <laughs> you had to, well, we don't know yet. You know, you might put some heat on somebody. That might get you some points and get you out. What are you, in sixth place right now? Yeah. You got a chance to jump. I like your chances. I hope so. And you're still young and handsome, too. <laughs> and a great sense of humor. Okay, heat number three, Billy Kazmaier against Joe Doobie. Now, Kazmaier's a young guy. He might have a little problem with Yeah, he's above a look. You see, he's starting up too high. No, he's making a big mistake. I don't care how big and how strong you are. If you don't stay low in this event at the first, you're out, you're out of luck. He's see, Doobie's got high, a lead. Yeah. Yep. See, and he keeps trying to stand up. And he, he's, it's much too early. He doesn't have the speed up enough on the tram. See, Doobie's got a lead on him. Now, Kazmaier's greater strength is beginning to show up a little bit. Doobie's having some trouble. Got up too, too high, it looks like. Yeah. Far lane is Joe Doobie from Florida. Billy Kazmaier, now they're just about a dead heat right now. Yeah, but they're both, the tram's moving too slow. They can't really bend into the weight properly and make it really go. Right now's time was 24-3-9. Not, not a good time. Okay. Oxygen. One of the most demanding events in the entire competition so far has been this tram pull. They, they do need that oxygen as soon as they hit the finish line. Oh, yeah. Tremendous oxygen debt in this thing. Here's John Cole now. Not too heavy in the near court, so to speak, and big Lars Headland and a ton over in the other one. Oh, yeah. That body weight advantage is really showing in this event. Even though John's staying low and he's doing well, but... Still, he's only 260 against an over 10,000 pound vehicle. Yeah, and see, he's leaning into it. Got a great angle on his body. He's really making it move now. He's gonna have a good time, I think. You realize everybody so does better. It seems to be doing better in that lane. I was just starting to say we haven't had a winner among some of the athletes in the yellow lane yet. Here are the results of that first heat in the tram pool. There's gonna be a runoff heat when we come back here on the World's Strongest Men competition. Here are those heats for the second tram pull found that the blue course to the left was a little bit swifter, so everybody switches lanes and now goes for a combined two-heat total to see who's going to win this. Here we go. That's right out to the right, and Bob Young of the Cardinals now at the top of your screen. Well, Bob didn't think that Don should beat him as badly as he did the first time, and it looks like he is uh, at least dead even with the big guy now. Right now it's up and walking, though. Now he's, he's about 70 or 80 pounds heavier than Bob, but Bob's got a little lead on him. Those kids are screaming like mad Look for each other. Look at this over 10,000 pounds, and he's almost, Bob's almost running with it now. Don's making a surge here, but nope, Bob, Bob nipped him. Bob Young wins it. The combined total now, right out, 49.94, Young at 55.58. Cleve Dean, near camera. He almost takes up the whole lens at 465. That's Billy Kazmaier to the left. Kazmaier gives away a lot of weight, but a very powerful man and in the faster lane perhaps he might be able to make up he was 36 seconds and changed the first time it looks like he's uh doing a lot better he's leaning more into the weight now it looks like he learned a little bit how to run the event but Cleve, Cleve, yes sir tough. Cleve's not giving it up and he's got those mammoth feet on that yes look at pavement. that very close it's gonna be almost boy that's photo finish Dean is given the nod by two hundredths of a second now the combined totals as we're into our second heat show you right now still the leader Kazmaier now in fourth Young followed by Big Cleve Dean okay Lars had did it well in this got up very early but he's against John Kolb who can compete just about any way you want to yes he can and they've switched lanes now and Kolb is in the what's supposed to be the faster lane you see see what how heavy that thing is Tom it's hard for them to even get it started but look at John look how he's staying down well, Lars is big, too, though. He yeah. is coming out. He's coming on, but John's got a big lead now. Look at, Looks look like, at he's drive, like he's drive blocking, doesn't he? He's got the arms moving, getting all he has into it. No wonder Harvey Martin has trouble with him. <laughs> look at that. Lars comes on strong at the finish. Let's see these combined totals. There's some struggling going on. The reason is money and, of course, pride. Consistency by Don Reinhout. His two-run total, 49.94. Lars Hedlund moving up, and Bob Young in third place. But it's Ryan out, picking up 10 points. The old veteran moves past Billy Kazmaier in the first place in the overall standings. Lars Hedlund making a move. John Culp still very much alive. Go to the...
Next to the last event here at the World's Strongest Men. Number nine, the refrigerator race. What about it, Terry? Well, it's an uphill race, slightly uphill. The refrigerator, as we said before, weighs a little over 400 pounds. It's strapped onto the body, and as you can see, it has support supports on it which uh, allow the athlete to fall if that should happen without danger. Okay, John Kolb on the right. Billy Kazmaier on the left. Ooh. Oh, no. Kolb is Quite down. Now, let's see what it is. can't tell. Oh, a strap. A Looks like a strap, strap broke, yeah. Okay, Kazmaier, of course, did even look into his rearview mirror. He just steamed on home here. Pretty good shape. That is a tremendously heavy thing to have on there, huh? Well, he's going to try to come on up on in. Even he's just holding it there. The strap's not helping him. He's just holding it there with main strength. John Cobb, quite an effort. 34:26 his belated time. Casmar at 18.13. And getting some help right now. Now Cobb uh, might have an option on this and probably get a a free run by himself. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens on that. Yeah, he'll have to look at the points and decide whether he wants to make the effort to do it again see the time was not good but this is a tough grueling part of it this might be one of the toughest events i because of the equipment failure bob is running by himself here okay. of course that's a little bit of a disadvantage to him but since they're just running against the clock it doesn't really matter hey, he's tripping it off he's moving some yeah, going pretty good he realizes he can't get into the finals he can't get into the top four so he's not giving it quite the effort that perhaps he could. I think for a guy that has no chance of getting to the finals, Still, he's giving it a lot of Moving it pretty good, though. It's like the top. line coaches yelling at him at St. Louis. <laughs> Bob Young with a 19.47. In second place. Cleve Dean. He's the only one, I guess, that's probably bigger than the Isobox. Yes, Cleve is actually box, huh? larger than the Isobox. People really began to pick up on this young guy. I hear the yelling good on Yeah, the he's a big favorite. Look at him. <laughs> That's about Cleve's normal pace there. I don't think he notices that refrigerator. I think he'd like to open it and get into it and find out what's in there. <laughs> no doubt he's done that a few times. <laughs> Fine time. Seventeen forty-five. Seventeen forty-five, Cleve. I enjoy it. I love it. You know, somebody said that when when you were practicing with this the other day, that you went back to the hotel, forgot your head on your back, trying to get the elevator. <laughs> I don't think it's quite that bad. But you did say this is on the only thing now, really one of the events where where you weighed more than the event did, so you thought you might be able to handle this, huh? Oh yeah. Good job though, huh? Thank you. You were coming Appreciate home. Trying to. There are the times. The leader is Big Cleve Dean, 17.45. Hey, now the a apparatus is fixed again. Yeah, yeah, the apparatus is fixed, and so both men are going to go. Lars Hedlund and Don Reinhardt. Now, is Reinhardt going to give it an all out one? He's got a lead coming in. Yeah, I think he wants to protect his lead, and so I think you can expect a good effort from him. But Lars, who won this event last year, is uh, really good at it. He really seems to know just how to do those little short that. steps. Look he at just that. trips along. Yeah. For a guy <laughs> 300 and something, he is well, he's gonna, it. He can, You know, he'd be dangerous in the NFL, wouldn't he? Wow, look at the time. Lars Hedlund, 13.73 wins it. Don Reinhardt, second, 15.44. John Kolb was given a chance by the officials to run the event again okay. because the equipment failed on him, but he decided to forego that chance and save himself for the final competition in the tug of war. Did you yell at the refrigerator? Somebody said you took a bite out of it before you got ready. You got in <laughs> Yeah, I get mad. You ready to go? I'm sure. Last, last event? No, it's the final. Let's take it. Okay, we've got one more event. Let's check the studies right now and see where we are. We're going to have one strongest man. Getting close because of Lars Hedlund's big win in that refrigerator race. Getting 10 points. And the top four are preparing now for that tug of war. Bob Young in fifth place gets a $1,000 bonus. Yeah, it's an old event, steeped in tradition. And they came here to decide who the best man was. And I think if any event can separate, this is the event. Somebody said that Don Reinhardt might just uh, lay back, get a little advantage, and then put it in park and st sit, sit it out. Yeah. They tell me he's been training against two football players that weigh 560 pounds together, and that he's a match for them, so he's going to be hard to beat in this event. And here are the pairings in this tug of war, the final event at the World's Strongest Men competition. Billy Kazmaier will go against John Kolb, then Don Reinhardt will go against Lars Hedlund, and then the winners will tangle later on. Now, Kolb cannot win the overall championship. That's right. Even if he wins this event, he can't win the overall competition because he doesn't have enough points. But he can affect the standings. If he beats Kazmaier in this tug, 
he will eliminate Kazmaier's chances to win the overall competition. He could really be the spoiler then and virtually decide who's going to win it? He sure could. I like it. You know how he likes that, that underdog role. Okay. What about the sand? How deep is it? What's the strategy going to be here, Terry? It's several feet deep. These men have to uh, draw the other man, some part of the other man's body, across that line. And if at the end of one minute time limit, that one man has not reached the line, then whoever has the most rope over the center is the winner. What early advantage looks like John Cole. That's amazing. He's able to help. I thought Kazmaier would walk right out with him, but he's not. Kazmaier is standing up, and that's a big mistake. Now, how you, much digging down can you do? It looks well, like Cole is... <laughs> He's lying back, you see, but you can't lie back on the sand for more than five seconds at a time. Okay. He stayed as far back in the yeah. midline, though, as possible. Yeah, you get much, much better leverage by lying back as far as you can. Kazmaier, should, should, he's standing up. You see that? That's a big mistake. Now, Cole was giving away, what, 60 yeah, pounds? Yeah, 60, 65 pounds. Look at that. It's in the yeah, street court. Still, still a fight, though. But okay. time and, I think, endurance is on Cole's side because he's a smaller man and in better condition. And I think... What well, looks like Bill is running out of gas. Tell you, we've all time. tugged on a rope, though. That could take oh. it all out of you. Look oh, at yes, this. Look at that. Not quite over yet, but oh, he's gone now. That's it. John Cobb is the upset winner again. What a disappointment to Bill. Now, John Cobb, who really has been sensational. He has never counted himself out or been out, and he may rest and have to come back and tug a war again. Last shot, Don. Right now, this uh, is your, your chance. You win this. Uh, this particular tug of war, you are the world's strongest man. Good luck to you, all right? Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. And Lars, a uh, big man from Sweden, you have really been able to decide this thing by coming on this uh, this last day for a tremendous finish. Uh, good luck to you. Man your ropes and let's go at it, huh? Okay. Some kind of a psych job by the big Swede. He looked uh, right out, not in the eye, just like he almost with disdain. He wanted to get at it. Listen, Tom, he's ready. He wants this. He knows that if he can beat Don... He's got a chance to win the overall competition. He can come back and beat Cobb in the finals. Oh boy, right First, now. he's got to beat a 350-pound Tiger. Right now, just pulled him almost out of the sand. Yeah, but look at he's reeling, reeling Don in now. But he's almost over the line. He's right up to the... Oh. Dangerous yeah. strategy by, by he's, Lars. He's got a lot of rope, you see. He's, got, he's almost over the line himself. He's working on right out into the, the rope. Man. Very risky business. One jerk, and Don could pull him over. Very close you to being over. It, Don's, he's got to get back up within Hedlund. five seconds. Hedlund's got an advantage now. Yeah. He's got the big yeah. fellow down. Yes. Hedlund's working right at the, the rhythm. the time is almost up now. There's very little time left. Very little rope between them. Yeah. Right out is really in trouble. They're both playing out. Five seconds left. Hands over the line now. He's done. Yep, he's done. Lars Hedlund in a great bit of strategy. Oh, look at the guy go down. 60 seconds of terminal all-out effort. John Cobb isn't through yet, but he does get fourth place, and his total money will be $4,571.50. Billy Kazmaier gets third place at over $7,500. And here's the big fellow who could win it all with his final great week of competition, Lars Hedlund. He's made a great surge. And if he can beat Cole, I wouldn't bet against Cole for anything. I think the craziest thing about the tug of war competition is the strategy. I can't believe that there are several different ways you could do it and be a winner. Yeah, Lars seems to favor standing straight up, whereas John falls back and uses more leverage and uh, more athletic ability. Now, Lars also tries to work up and get too close to the middle line. Is that a dangerous thing to do? I think it is a dangerous thing to do. He was able to pull it off last time, but that sure. last one must have taken a lot out of him. He's got a weight advantage over... John Cole, right? Weight advantage is probably a cardiovascular disadvantage. He's just holding right now, trying to wait to let the other one make the first move and counterattack. Cole has got the ye yellow ribbon on his side. Yes, he has. You see the difference? Lars is standing up where he uses just the muscles of his upper body, and John is going to the lower body. Lars the legs are stronger than arms. Lars looks like he's sort of tethering him out, like I can take you any time I want to. Lars's feet are pretty close together now. Very close. It looks to me as if, yep, John's strategy looks like it's paying off now. Oh, we've seen his fast hands. He's Look almost going over. It's over. He's over. It's it. That's it. Reinhardt wins. And Lars can't believe it. This makes Don Reinhardt the winner. Yes, sir. He's the champion. Time after time, we've seen John Cobb, apparently out of the contest, beat men that are much larger and much more experienced. 
He's quite a competitor. Yeah, he won for himself, and he won for Don Reinhardt. It's just an amazing feat of athletic ability. And the big Swede, Lars Hedlund, gets second place, $9,780 to the champion whose middle name might be competitive.